So the SL5200 is a high-end direct drive turntable that Techniques had out in the, um, I think this one out, was out in the mid-80s. It's very similar to the SLM1, which I have. The difference is being the base material is different. The SLM1 is a wooden base. This one's a composite base. And this one has a more conventional uh, tone arm and head shell, whereas the SLM1 use the, the P-mount cartridge. But other than that, mm -hmm. the units themselves are very, very similar. They use the same drive mechanism, the same motor. Uh, this is an auto return, whereas the SLM1 just picked the needle up at the end of the record and, and stopped it from turning. But other than that, these units here are very similar in design. So what we're going to do on this one here is it was brought in because uh, the, the owner of it wanted it overhauled and lubricated it. He thought it was just a little bit beyond his ability. So that's what we're going to do on this video. And I'm just going to test it out first before uh, going into it. And then we'll take it all apart. Wap Caplet, loose liver then better and prang. Thank you. Do sit down. My name's Wap Caplet, Adrian. Hmm. It's a different. We can sell anything. <coughs> Good. Follow. That hum is just from my, my lack of ground. I gotta hook up my ground wire for that. Maybe I can ground it too. There. That'll solve that. The concern on this was that the muting wasn't working properly. units to operate is when you raise and lower the tone arm it actually mutes the sound before it picks up the needle so that you don't hear the thump and it waits until the needle is dropped before it releases the muting that's to stop the and typically there's a switch that is over in the queuing damper that uh, cuts off the sound. So let's take a look at that switch. We're gonna have to turn the turn table over to do that so I don't want the table dropping off of this one. This is quite unique. This is the same as the SLM1. Take a look at this. You don't see too many turntables like this. It's direct drive. I'm keeping you guys in suspense. Ta-da. There's the uh, rotor. It's at the actual magnet here and it has a series of coils so when you take one of these apart you got to be careful not to put this thing anywhere where something magnetic could be attracted to it because uh, you know iron filings or something metallic will actually stick to the magnet and uh, that wasn't a good example it's not a magnetic screw but uh, things that are magnetic would stick to it and if you had iron filings or something around, if it got on the magnet, it could damage it. Of course, everything I'm, everything I'm putting on here is stainless steel or aluminum. Nothing's going to stick to it. I don't have anything on here, I think, that will, that will stick to it. Oh, yeah, this will. Okay, this component here will stick to it, you see. So you got to be careful. When you're uh, working on one of these, that you protect the magnet from picking up anything that could uh, get stuck to it and cause damage. There's a spindle on this one, and I'm going to uh, turn this thing over, and we'll get into the bottom of this and take a look at the dampening and the uh, 
the muting circuit. So to open up the unit we'll remove the red mark screws. The base will just lift off. Here's our auto reject or auto stop mechanism. When it's triggered by either moving, moving the lever over to the reject position, which I'll do here, You'll see what it does is it pushes a little lever in here, which is now done. As the turntable is turning, it will rotate the gear one rotation until it once again reaches its home position. Our muting circuit is over here. It's easier to illustrate if I take take the ground off so we can hear it humming but when I press up on or press on the actual lever that lifts the tone arm you'll hear the hum will cut out so if we look right here onto this board you'll see these the yellow and the gray wire these are actually the muting wires so our tone arm wires come up here onto this shield and these wires here go around back here and it's actually a small switch which is buried underneath inside here that activates when the tone arm is raised to put a short on the audio output from the cartridge where it connects to the output wires that go to your preamp. So I'm now going to remove the actual chassis so that we can get at the bottom of the mechanism so that I can clear out all the old dried up grease because it will be getting dried. We're going to clean the grease off the mechanism, relube it, and I'll also clean those switches which will be accessible once I remove this main uh, cover plate which holds the motor base. So the actual st um, uh, stator assembly is actually mounted to this base. So first I'm going to remove the old grease from the mechanism. This is the slide plate that operates the tone arm to pick up the tone arm and return it back to the home position for the auto stop. We're going to clean off this grease and replace it with some uh, Molly Coat, uh, the yellow grease that's used on VCRs because that stuff just doesn't dry up like this old uh, black grease did. Here's the switch down here.
It's just the queuing arm that I'm lubricating here. You're operating the queuing mechanism. Everything operates smoothly. The queuing arm itself has silicon grease on it, which I don't have any silicon grease. It's a very high viscosity grease that is what allows the tone arm to drop. It's very thick. I don't have any, so I think the stuff that's on here is probably okay. You know, it's it's dropping at the proper rate, so that's okay. So I think we're okay there. I just want to lubricate the mechanism on here, lubricate the auto stop gears and so forth, and then we'll put the motor assembly back into this thing. This is the switch that operates when you pick up the tone arm. The tone arm moves and engages the power switch to turn on the unit. E clip out of there so I can remove the main cam gear. So we can lubricate the bottom of the track here. This is the slide that we lubricated the other side already, so I have to clean up this pin here, clean up the groove in the back here. the old dried grease out of here. I'll put some fresh grease on the mechanism here. Once the unit operates it will actually spread the grease around. You don't want too much, too much grease they say it's worse than not enough. You just want enough to keep the mechanism itself lubricated. Okay, it should be plenty. 
once the mechanism is operated, it will spread that grease around. Just clean off the remainder from the side of the Okay, making this one back timed and back together. We'll put our washer on here and our E-clip back on to hold everything together. Okay, I think the bottom's ready to go on this thing now so we can turn it over and put the turntable back on and test it and see if it's working. It should be working fine. Just basic overhauling 101 for these things. I don't like that circuit glue. We're going to get rid of that stuff. This crap that's on the board here. If you look down here, they've got some of that crappy circuit glue here around this IC. This stuff goes corrosive and will eventually attack the traces. So we're going to take that off. Just pick it off there. Anytime you see that yellow circuit glue that they quite often put on the boards to hold wires and stuff in place, anytime you see that stuff, it's got to go. Because what will happen is over time it deteriorates and becomes conductive. In a case like something like this, you'd end up with the speed going out on it. Okay, queuing arm up. Down. Queuing arm up. Down. Sit on my face and tell me that you love me. I'll sit on your face and tell you. You notice that uh, there's a light on here too, right? So that if you're in the dark and you're trying to queue up records well you can see what you're doing let's make it dark to the little switchable light get your strobe that shows you the speed and you can also turn on a light to cue the record in the dark Films drive ready Check the auto, auto return here. Oh, 
I'm worried about whether I ought to have There we go. It's overhauled. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you were a Patreon member, you'd get to see the bonus footage that's tacked onto the end of this. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.